Blue Pig weekend uh, going strong. What are your thoughts on today's ball game? Uh, there's a lot of pressure on because it started it started Friday with uh, you know our, our our victory and then our our uh, soccer team our volleyball team. So happy for Brett Bielema and his guys last night. That was that was just an awesome time to be a Razorback and and uh, I sure didn't want to be the one that tripped us up this weekend. I had some real concerns about this game because you know I thought Friday we're on a pretty emotional high being the first game an elementary day and all the excitement that goes with that and I was very concerned with having one day off and not much time to prepare the weather the one o'clock start right after church there wouldn't be a lot of fans here so I really challenged our team to you know that's a growing process for us right now to mature and understand that it doesn't matter if there's 700 people in the gym or 3,500 that you've got to you've got to muster your own energy and your own voices so I had some concerns coming in the ball club Savannah State that's hung 106 on somebody Friday. Uh, they had 96 in their exhibition game. They can really, really score. Uh, you saw us at times with, we were mismatched all over the floor, but we couldn't help it. We we're going to play man-to-man -man defense, and we had 6-3 kids guarding 5-4 kids, but it's not an excuse. Uh, defensively in the second half, we had some lapses. I thought overall, though, to hold a team to 29% from the field uh, is very good. Was not pleased at all with our three-point defense. Allowed them to shoot 37% for the game. There's a time in that second half where it, uh, I told him in a timeout that we're, we are not playing like we're supposed to play. Uh, the, the, the gym was quiet, but I looked at our defense. We we're standing up. We weren't talking. We weren't fighting. There's no excuse for that. Being up 25 or 30, there's no excuse to play basketball like that. So we corrected it down the stretch. Um, happy to be 2-0, and and now it gets a whole lot more serious Thursday at Middle Tennessee State. Talk about the size advantage you had today and how that worked into the game plan. Well, we had 32 points in the paint. We, want, we wanted to go inside early and, and establish it. Uh, I, thought we were, I thought we took good open threes. We were five out of 15 or 16, I think, from the three-point line. So we didn't settle for threes. We wanted to take a high volume of twos in the game, and I thought we did. Uh, you know, that's a club that can really ha harass you and turn you over. Uh, so it was a good experience for us, and some of us handle it better than others. Uh, but. You know, I'm very, I'm very pleased with our effort. Uh, my kids need a, they, they need a day off right now. It's been a kind of a grind for them last week, getting ready for the first game, and then yesterday, and then today, a, a quick turnaround. So we'll take tomorrow off. Uh, my players will, uh, and we'll come back to work on Tuesday. But yeah, our size advantage was important. I liked how we uh, rebounded the ball again, 44 to 27. I thought we should have out rebounded by more than that. So, but they're a good ball club. Cedric does a good job with his kids. They're, you know, going to paint. Finish somewhere in the top two or three in the MEAC. They got the MEAC Player of the Year. Uh, the the Kalu kid's a good player. She's a very good player. And Kelsey Brooks now back-to-back -back games defensively has taken on the other team's best uh, best player and, and really kind of locked them down. So I think she's starting to develop some pride in being that defender for us. Jackson got her 500th career point today. Two games into her sophomore season. How special is that? Unusual for someone to get it so quickly? Yeah, it's. Uh, uh, you know, she's, uh, she's got a chance to be really, really good. Um, she continued to rebound the ball today. I, I, I put individual challenges on our, on our board before we take the floor. And one of hers today was four offensive rebounds. Well, she ended up getting five. She had 12 for the game. So I do see her growth from last year to this year right now in terms of getting on the boards. I like that. Uh, I think she's a better defender than she was last year. I know she's in better shape. She runs the floor better. Uh, so I'm pleased, with, I'm pleased with her progress. She's not a finished product, but to go over 500 points two games into her uh, sophomore year tells you that uh, she can score the basketball in multiple ways. She's got a chance to, uh, to be one of the you know, all-time great players to play at Arkansas. She's not yet, but she has a chance to be if she continues to listen and be coachable and, and learn how to fight every day. But I've had uh, nothing but positive things uh, to say about Jess really over the last – uh, two months. She she's really made a lot of strides under me. So the 18 turnovers didn't bother you the other day. The 15 today, uh, a little bit. Yeah, there. starting to. Yeah, we're, we're we're a better ball handling club than that. I know we only have three guards. But that's not an excuse. Uh, and I know this is a team that can you know force you into 40. So I thought I thought we handled their press well. Their, their press didn't cause us turnovers. Our carelessness in the half court caused us turnovers. Uh, but you look up at uh, Callie Berna played. 34 minutes, had five turnovers, three assists, but she was constantly being harassed. We're just, we're just a little sloppy with the basketball. Uh, part of that's probably on me. I'm still not. I'm still trying to figure out who we are offensively, what's best for us to run. A lot of times, I'm 
kind of doing things on the fly a little bit and, and maybe putting them in some positions in game action that we haven't done a lot of stuff in practice. Uh, but that's okay. I'm learning like they are. I'm learning my team like they're learning me. So um, we got we to gotta stay under 15 turnovers going forward, though, with the competition that we're getting ready to face. I was, I was pleased with the turnout. It says the estimated attendance was 700. It's probably more than that, especially as the game went on and, and the men's crowd started to come in a little bit. Uh, it was a little quiet out there, but I just hope the Razorback fans continue to uh, w want to come and believe in the vision that we have and how we're going to build this uh, and see how we play. I thought we were together today. I thought we were tough. I thought we fought. All those things I'm trying to ingrain in us every single day. I don't think we hit those those marks quite as high as we did Friday, uh, but but I'm, I'm still pretty pleased with the uh, the, the maturity and the, the toughness and the togetherness of my team. Looking forward to Thursday's uh, road, you know, big test. Just kind of gauge where your team really is. Yeah, that's a that's a really big test. Middle Tennessee is a perennial NCAA tournament team, finishing the top 40 RPI. You just very, very few teams ever go to Murfreesboro and win. I know that uh, on the men's or the women's side. So they're going to have a big crowd. It's going to be loud. Um, you know, I've already told our guys we're going to have to play through a lot of contact. They're, they're, they're a heavy contact team. They're going to press us all over the floor. Uh, they probably saw some things today when they watch this game tape that think they can press us with some success. So we'll have to get better at the press. But absolutely, we need to – We need to. No, I thought Nickel State's a good team. I think Savannah State's a team that's going to finish in the top two or three in their league and got a chance to, to win their league tournament and be in the NCAA as well. But I do, I do think Middle Tennessee, especially since on the road, we're going to really find out. We'll, we'll know Thursday night about 9 o'clock local time where we are as a basketball team. What we'll surprised you at all? Yes. Uh, uh, she has surprised me uh, in the fact that offensively how much – she has gained her confidence. She was not at all a confident offensive kid when I took this program over. Uh, but we've done a ton of shooting. I've told her I need her to be a scorer. She jumps up right now and shoots that 15-footer as well as anybody I have. Uh, what doesn't surprise me about Mo is her motor. I mean, if it, if it ever is a more appropriate uh, nickname for a kid, it's Mo. I don't know why they call her that. I would call her that because of her motor. It's nonstop. And she deserves everything she's getting, back-to-back double-doubles. I'm very, very proud of her. She, she, to me right now, is the heartbeat and the pulse of this ball club. I want a player like that every year under me. That's a tough grinder, uses their voice, cares more about the team than themselves, will fight you every possession of every day of every practice. And that's exactly who Melissa Wolf is.